News First News Line with Faraz Shaukat Ali. And a very good evening to you and welcome to News Line Live. We're recording this uh, afternoon actually from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Colombo. Our guest is the State Minister of Health, Dr. Sudarshini Fernando Pule. Very good evening to you, madam, and uh, welcome to the show. Good evening, Faraz. Thank you. Um, Straight away, I'd like to ask you, uh, there is a, a whole lot of concern going on about the uh, vaccination program. Um, much of it is obviously fueled by a lack of uh, sound knowledge. And I'd like to ask you then, in that context, uh, obviously Sri Lanka doesn't have a, um, a stock, a fair stock of vaccines. Um, because that's the nature of our economy, I suppose, and so on. But what do you say to the people who have already received uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine, around 1.2 million people? And now uh, we know that they got another 300,000, 320 something thousand, but the net amount is around 900,000 who are still waiting for the AstraZeneca. Uh, can you tell me? Uh, Minister, what plans do you have to put those people's minds at ease? Actually, for us, we received our the Ministry of Health had planned to commence the vaccination uh, in March, first week of March. Yeah. But because of His Excellency, the President, uh, who through uh, his uh, um, government to government negotiations with uh, the Prime Minister of India, he managed to get 500,000. Uh, AstraZeneca vaccines as a donation. So uh, we received the stocks in on the 20th of January and vaccination commenced on the 29th. And NMRS Sri Lanka, within a week, uh, they approved uh, the use of uh, AstraZeneca vaccine mm. under emergency conditions before WHO approved. And therefore, we commenced vaccination. And uh, we also ordered uh, 1.5 million. Uh, doses from uh, uh, Serum Institute. Mm. And in addition to that, the D WHO through the COVAX facility, to, which ensures equitable distribution of vaccines to countries mm -hmm. uh, who cannot afford to uh, purchase uh, large stocks, bulk stocks, they also assured uh, that they will uh, provide uh, vaccines uh, to uh, immunize around 20% of our population. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, uh, approximately 42 lakhs of people. Mm. So um, we received the donation and at the f first instance the recommendation was to give the second dose after four weeks. Yeah. So therefore we, we plan to use this 500,000 giving priority to the health workers and the frontline triforces and the police and the balance to keep it to be given as a second dose. Mm -hmm. But in, in the meantime the re uh, researchers um, published that it, it was better to postpone giving the second dose because the response was better. Mm -hmm. So accordingly, they recommended 12 weeks uh, for the second dose. Right. And the technical committee in the Ministry of Health decided uh, that uh, accordingly, the second dose could be postponed to 10 to 12 weeks. So, uh, and on top of that, uh, although WHO and the technical uh, organizations recommended giving priority to those above 60 because that globally um, the death rate was highest among older people. Mm. Looking at the Sri Lankan data, we uh, identified that of the majority of sick people, only 10% were above 60. Oh, it was in, locally in the Sri Lankan context, you know, the elderly people, unlike in the Western world, the Sri Lankan population, they, they, they are not very active, you know, when they become older, they, mm -hmm. they tend to remain you know, at home. So, uh, the bulk of the disease, the age group was between 30 to 60 and they were the people who were contributing to the economic development of a country. So, a, a policy decision was taken to purchase vaccines to vaccinate those between 30 to 60 and what we were receiving through COVAX to be used for those 60 and above. But in between all this, yeah. um, in between all this, is it fair to say that a certain amount of politics entered the fray, and people were too busy planning on having elections and so on no. to 
to order the vaccines early now? No, no. Elections were uh, in August mm. uh, last year, that is in 2020. But we ordered 1.5 million uh, AstraZeneca vaccine from Serum Institute. And uh, uh, we were assured uh, of a regular supply. And based on, you know, once we received the 1.5, we were to order the next batch. We had the funds ready. So, uh, and uh, under the COVAX facility, we were assured 1.6 million mm -hmm. uh, as the first installment, of which we received 264,000. So therefore, we started vaccinating the public as well. Mm -hmm. And priority to, to, was given to Colombo and Gampa because the largest numbers during the second wave, the largest numbers of cases were from Colombo and uh, Gampa, and the death burden was highest in Colombo district. So accordingly. Mm -hmm. The Colombo municipality area, the Colombo district, MOH areas, Gampa district, the Grama Nidal divisions, which had the highest numbers of cases, got priority. So, accordingly, those 30 and above, uh, we initiated vaccin vaccination. And then, towards end of March, uh, Serum Institute conveyed that they had a fire and they may not be able to deliver as promised. Mm -hmm. And then, this got delayed, you know, uh, daily. And, uh, and now, the, uh, in Serum Institute has a major issue in uh, supplying the orders of the, uh, you know, internationally. Mm -hmm. They are unable to comply the issue with uh, India, where they had to prioritize uh, their supply. So, uh, although we had 12, uh, one point, uh, uh, one point, uh, around 1.2 million in hand, mm -hmm. uh, we uh, vaccinated uh, approximately 925,000 of the population. And we had 300, we kept 300, the balance 330,000 in hand to start the second dose. So, mm. because we are seeing increasing numbers of cases from about uh, the 20th of April, earlier decision was to commence, the technical committee decided that the second dose could be initiated uh, from the first week of May. But because of this, uh, un, uh, this increase in the cases, mm -hmm. it was advanced to last week of April. So, now, uh, the health workers, the tri forces, the police, the frontline workers are being vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And we are trying very hard. The ministry, Honorable Channa Jai Sumanas Ministry, uh, does the procurement. They, all of us are trying hard to uh, procure vaccine 600,000 doses from countries which have excess stocks. And we do are, we have money to pay for it? Yeah, we have money. Money is not an issue. Right. It's the supply, you know, because mm -hmm. the a vaccine is in very high demand and we are and with the problems faced by serum institute and since they were uh, unable to comply uh, with their regular you know the order this is beyond our control so but how much does personal friendships and personal associations come into play when it's in, when you're dealing at a national yeah, level of course because of the personal contacts his excellency had with the prime minister we were able to get a donation of 500000 long before our planned date mm -hmm. and uh, accordingly we were assured regular supplies of vaccines so uh, but unfortunately circumstances beyond our control mm -hmm. uh, we could not uh, get the supplies as promised and not only us, even WHO, the COVAX facility is also unable to uh, procure vaccines from Serum Institute. Mm -hmm. So we have a shortage of 600,000 uh, vaccine doses. So we are ver trying very hard uh, with personal contacts. We are trying to uh, get stocks from other countries. And, uh, and in the meantime, studies are being done whether a cocktail of vaccines could be given because, you know, because of the um, problems identified, uh, the scientists are researching whether the first, uh, the possibility, looking at the possibility of giving uh, one type as first dose uh, to be followed by a different type of vaccine as the second dose. So, uh, all these re uh, findings will be available very shortly. Right. And we also, in the meantime, we, the NMRA uh, approved Sputnik uh, 5 and we have placed uh, orders and we will be giving, uh, getting regular supplies of Is Sputnik. Is that a bit of a waste of a time in emergency situations when we have to get uh, the NMRA? After all, the NMRA approval is m in these emergency situations is merely a rubber stamp. No, uh, for us, we, we NMRA has to assure the safety, quality uh, and the efficacy of vaccines right. because we have to make sure that the people uh, get uh, 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 effective vaccine, 
uh, which can produce antibodies and also we have to assure the safety. So uh, accordingly NMRA going through the dossiers looking at the phase 3 clinical trials the, before WHO approved NMRA had uh, Zoom uh, meetings and they approved uh, the use of Sputnik under emergency conditions. Of course, right. under normal circumstances it will take a long time to uh, get a vaccine approved but because of the emergency they approved Sputnik and now we also have registered and we have come to an agreement to purchase Pfizer vaccines and other 5 million doses. So, so the issue is now with AstraZeneca our existing logistics can be used because it has to be stored at 2 to 8 degrees. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have been vaccinating our children very successfully. Uh, we are role model to the, not only the region to the world. Uh, so the existing the cold chain monitoring capacity was utilized for AstraZeneca. Right. But uh, now Sputnik we have got uh, around 15,000 uh, doses to be used as a you know test run because that mm -hmm. there you have to store the vaccine at minus 20. So today so even the Sputnik. Sputnik. Now Sputnik uh, vaccination commenced at Gotatua, Kolonawa because that is the uh, area where uh, uh, large numbers of cases are being reported mm -hmm. not only now but even in the previous. So uh, vaccination commenced but here they have to use a freezer truck at the site of vaccination to sow the vaccine. So the log there are logistical issues. Mm -hmm. You can't transport in the uh, usual carriers. You, and also the vial has to be utilized very soon. Um, uh, if I am right, it's, uh, within the first two hours, you have to fi finish vaccinating the people. So that's a tall order. Yeah. So uh, now Astra, uh, we didn't have such issues with AstraZeneca. So, but however, we have to move forwards and we have to uh, protect our people. So, according to the SPC under Honorable Channa Jayasumana has planned the procurement of vaccines and once we complete vaccinating uh, these uh, 15,000 people, uh, they, uh, we will have to send a report and within two weeks uh, Sputnik 5, uh, the Russian government will send us continuous supplies and in the meantime we have also ordered, requested 5 million doses of uh, Pfizer vaccines and uh, it also is being considered by the NMRA for approval. Now vaccines which are approved by other stringent authorities, uh, NMRA does not have a major issue in approving this like you know the Canadian, the Australian, the EU, yeah. uh, like once you, uh, once they approve, uh, NMRA uh, does not have a major issue but with sign of harm, uh, the approval is getting delayed because of phase 3 clinical trial, the uh, evidence, the uh, information is incomplete. So WHO also has not recommended. So NMR mm -hmm. is also trying hard to get the necessary information because right now we have around 595,000 Sinopharm vaccines also with us. Um, there, there has been concern, we are going back to this actually, there have been concern that the um, that the explanations given about the time period, four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, 16 weeks, um, that these are mere excuses reflective of the fact that f for whatever reason, Sri Lanka has become uh, sort of caught out, uh, caught in the slips in a way, um, because uh, they've been caught up in this unfortunate delivery issue. No, I don't agree with that for us because now information of uh, about uh, you know corona and you know vaccines are all evolving it keeps on changing because research findings you know people are uh, still researching so accordingly I, uh, as i told you when we got the stocks the initial recommendation was to give after four weeks but the, the scientists found out that when the second dose was postponed up to 12 weeks the response antibody response was much better higher Mm -hmm. So accordingly, Sri Lanka also followed that uh, followed the recommendation. But now Canada, France, they post, they have postponed giving the second dose up to f 16 weeks. So according to our technical committee, it's not a political decision. The technical committee takes the decision. So the technical committee, based on all these evidence, research findings, publication, they decided that the uh, second dose could be postponed to. Uh, 14 to 16 weeks. So accordingly, Sri Lanka also uh, adopted the same measures. Excepting, of course, we don't have the vaccines ready. Of course, now. unfortunately, no. Yeah. We don't. Uh, we are short of. So how do, how, how real is the danger that, um, contrary to our constitution, 
a special class of person will be created, the class of people who uh, have had COVID-1 and who are now caught out in this uh, sort of battle to get the second dose. Faraz, you have to understand that this is nothing created by us. It's beyond our control because the suppliers could not comply. And also, however, even with the first dose, it has been found uh, to reduce transmission by 67%. And also the antibody response, even at three, uh, three months, it was found to uh, be uh, around 70, 72%. So even with the first dose, people have had uh, you know, the antibodies have been developed. So if you are exposed, technically speaking, if you are exposed to the virus, your body will recognize the virus and produce antibodies very quickly compared to an unvaccinated person. So, so technically speaking, the, the people who got the first dose are, you know, uh, they have some sort of protection. Uh, but had they got the booster, the protection would have been higher. Okay, so it's not all wasted. It's not all a waste. It's not a waste, it's of course, waste. yes, because in the now CNC's area, now we, we vaccinated most of these, uh, I think, the places, and the, uh, the transmission has gone down because during the second outbreak, we had a lot of cases from the Colombo municipal area, but mm -hmm. in this outbreak, we see fewer cases. But out of CNC area, there are large numbers of cases. So this may vaccination may have had an impact. On that note, we'll go for a short break and uh, take a peek at the headlines from uh, News First, uh, the primetime news at 9 o'clock. We'll see you on the other side. News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. And welcome back to Newsline Live. We are in conversation with Dr. Sudarshini Fernando Pillay, who is, of course, the State Minister of Health. Now then, Doctor, um, I know we've asked you this before, and we uh, continue to apply this whole question. Uh, the people are being asked to do their bit, the, the masks, the hand washing, and so on, and the distance. Whilst that is indeed a sound uh, advice, uh, advisories, what about the government becoming a bit uh, more tougher and uh, putting in measures to, uh, to control the movement of people? Because for us right now, the uh, regional directors of health services have been given uh, powers to lock down uh, based on the epidemiological situation. So yeah. they, in um, coordination with the government agents, uh, have been given the power. So, uh, because, you know, in locking down an entire country, there are issues. Of course, as doctors, we recommend, we would like, even today I saw, uh, you know, I read uh, an article by WHO local country rep, where she also had recommended, but of course, the majority of the Sri Lankans are daily wage earners. So yeah, 62 percent of our population yeah, uh, is a daily wage. Daily wage earners. So, when you lock down the country, their livelihoods are affected, so the government will have to support them. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, but of course, uh, still uh, uh, this situation could be controlled. We need the support of the public because the pub this is spread by droplets and especially when people gather, uh, you know, when they get, uh, and also they visit crowded places and without any protective measures, this could spread this and this particular strain is highly infective. Mm -hmm. So we request the public to adhere to uh, health guidelines, especially avoid the three C's, avoid crowds, avoid closed spaces, and avoid close contacts, uh, and follow dream, you know, social distancing, the respiratory etiquette, and keeping the hands clean. And also, if you, uh, if you, if you uh, do a PCR, until the report, uh, they receive the report, please stay indoors, because you mm. might be infected. Like, you know, because there's a backlog, you know, it takes about two to three days for you to receive the report. And if, if it is positive, this person could, you know, infect others. So until the PCR report is available, please remain indoors. And if you had contact with a P, uh, positive case, please quarantine, self-quarantine and inform the local PHI. Uh, with some PHI. of the decisions that have been taken by the government and its authorities, whilst acknowledging that they don't have all the information that we'd all like to, because of the nature of the uh, pandemic. Whilst acknowledging that, um, how much of these 
measures that were taken and sometimes not taken. Uh, for example, with this British uh, variant, huh. when we, that was beca it became known December to, to about February. Huh. Um, uh, and so there is now an argument to say, look, uh, because it's in hindsight. But anyway, there is an argument to say, look, why didn't you take stern measures then to stop the spread uh, and to stop the movement of people? Because we did see what happened over the Sinhalese uh, uh, when year. this Yeah, when this uh, British variant was discovered in December 2020, uh, for about two weeks, we suspended all flights coming from UK. Mm. Uh, but of course, uh, thereafter, we, uh, it was found that this uh, strain had spread to about eight con 80 countries. Mm. So there, after the, uh, the it was lifted, and um, uh, people were quarantined for two weeks. So once you are quarantined for two weeks, there's no risk of this leaking out into the population. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also identified a newer strain in January, the yeah. Sijavadanapura University, yeah. which, which they said could be similar to this UK variant uh, and of, uh, of, uh, in, about, uh, in a sample of about 28 and of this majority were from quarantine centers. And again in April 8th, on the 8th of April they said they had identified a new variant but they need two weeks to confirm. So according at that time our the, the case load was very uh, low uh, and the positive rate was around 2 to 3 percent PCR mm. positive. And uh, but they said they needed two weeks, but uh, from about the 20th we saw uh, an increase in the numbers of cases reported and the PCR pos uh, positive percent was increasing and then they confirmed that this was the B117 which was identified especially from Kurunagal and Colombo, samples from Colombo. So accordingly yeah. uh, it tallies with the rate of infection, rate of um, cases which we see, which, which have been reported daily. So, so you would uh, choose to? Um, to deny uh, the claim that uh, the government was too far too busy holding elections and so no, on and I, so forth. I deny that completely. Elections were held in August and the new variant was identified in December and now it's April. So measures were taken. Mm -hmm. But and you wouldn't, you, would you like to see stronger measures taken? We are, we are fast approaching 2,000. Yes. And if it's 2,000 times, even if it's 2,000 times 14 beds, that's, you know, 14 nights, that's 28,000 beds out of the system, which only has 90,000 anyway. But of course, I think we have to make sure that the people adhere to the guidelines. Because we see, you know, majority of them adhere, but there's a small percentage who do not uh, follow the health guidelines. So mm. the police are taking uh, strict measures to make sure that the people adhere to the health guidelines. Mm -hmm. So therefore all all parties, all weddings, all gatherings uh, have been cancelled, schools were closed. So the government has taken the necessary measures. So um, and uh, preventing uh, all uh, occasions where people gather and the, through which you know it could spread. So I think government is uh, and also has taken steps to expand the bed capacity in the districts to increase ICU capacity, HDU capacity to provide the necessary equipment, all that is being done. But what I urge the public is don't count the numbers of ICU beds, HDU, oxygen capacity because you, if you protect yourself, I know this could be prevented. And how is this move towards uh, more self-quarantining at home as because of this very thing about the beds getting taken up? Uh, why not have people who are showing a sim uh, who are asymptomatic? Why can't they be self-quarantined at home? Yes. Now, for us, initially during the second wave, even the primary contacts were taken to quarantine centres. But thereafter, we, we uh, identified uh, because it could not be sustained. So thereafter, we allowed the uh, technical committee permitted the primary contacts to be quarantined at home. So now we are also looking at the possibility of managing the asymptomatic patients at home, but of course linked to a doctor, uh, you know, medical team. Mm. Uh, guidelines have been developed, yeah. so maybe in the near, uh, next week or so, uh, the guidelines would be released. The asymptomatic patients uh, to be managed at home, but you have to always monitor them, and in case they are developing complications, they have to be moved on into a uh, hospital facility. And today. With Honorable Sister Jayakudi, we also had a discussion.
to um, take over all, you know, get the support of Ayurvedic hospitals because they have a capacity of about 5,000 uh, to uh, take o over these hospitals and, uh, you know, to provide shared care. Mm -hmm. where the, where if the patients, they volunteer their request, I mean, they will be given uh, Ayurvedic treatment. And we will also house a medical officer. But under has the, the Ayurvedic treatment, it hasn't really demonstrated any it, gain, has it? it uh, but it, again in Western, we do symptoms. We um, manage the patients according to their symptoms. So right. it's symptomatic treatment. But we have been drinking the Kottamalli, you know, for ancient times, for common cause yes. and cause. So if the patient is willing, you know, if they request, of course, yes. But of course, there will be a medical officer. Uh, to uh, examine the patients, to identify those with complications and with the support of a VP, they will be moved on to another uh, next uh, hospital with facilities to uh, manage the complicated, you know, when they get develop complications. And uh, last and final question, we're in the last minute here. Uh, you know, we saw when it came to the Port City Bill, we saw the urgency with which the government was dancing around. Uh, I'm sorry, but I'm saying it the way I saw it. They're dancing around, they did everything, uh, you know, bent over backwards to get it done and brought into parliament and also... No, it was not brought into parliament. You're, but, but, you're but, not, but, not brought into parliament. But what I'm saying is that they, 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 they danced uh, really hard when it came to the Port City Bill. Do you detect a certain, the same urgency, at least the same urgency, when it comes to tackling uh, the COVID-19 problem? and in securing the vaccine? Of course, uh, 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 the, it has been uh, from the very beginning, from the start of the first case, uh, uh, the government took necessary steps, established the necessary steering committees, the task force, the COVID uh, task force, and uh, took measures to control. So the first wave, we were successful. The second wave, uh, we were able to control. And now the third wave with the new variant, of course, the numbers are increasing. But I am sure, pretty sure, uh, that the government, together with our health sector, supported by the tri forces and police, and also the other community workers, you know, the, at the grassroots level, the government, you know, the, area, the development officers, uh, you know, the Samurdi officers, all of them are managing, you know, working as a team. So mm -hmm. all of them have responsibilities at different levels. So um, I know this is a, since this is the third outbreak. People are a bit, uh, you know, is my, maybe my because they have been uh, managing two uh, uh, outbreaks. So this is the third one, which is uh, severe. But of course, I know they, uh, we have the capacity to manage it uh, and control it. So the government has provided the necessary funding, the uh, the flexibility to take decisions. So the Honourable Minister, even now I am just returning from a Zoom meeting. We have regular meetings with the provincial directors, the regional directors, and uh, the and uh, you have to review the situation on a daily basis. So things are happening. Thank you very much. I hope things are happening to your satisfaction because we all want to see uh, COVID-19 being brought under control. I see that you're <coughs> sorry. I see you're wearing your uh, triple mask. Uh, and that is as uh, powerful as uh, any a message. And so uh, I'll let you have the last word. Of course, yes. I would urge the public to wear the double mask. You know, because uh, n the n new evidence says it's better to wear two masks to protect uh, yourself from the new variant because COVID, this virus will keep on mutating. So we have to be ready. Thank you, and uh, it's now time for the primetime news from News First. Take care, and as always, God bless.